But if they're only learning about milliliters and liters and conversion because they have to take a test, they will never understand these issues. That is why integrated learning is the only way to go. Dear viewers, welcome back uh, and continuing our Tarbiya series, especially with the breakdown of the differences, the contrasts between your factory model of schooling, which is dominant, which is existing everywhere, and the integrated learning model of schooling, of education, as espoused by Unity International School. And uh, continuing with the series, our next area of discussion or comparison is how disciplines or areas of knowledge are treated. So with factory model schools, it's a very disjointed approach. Disjointed disciplines, no connection to real life, no application to real life, uh, just uh, teach to the test, complete the syllabus, take the exam, give the grade, let's move on. So very, like like uh, the title says, a factory uh, approach to things. Just move it, move the piece, move the, mach uh, the, uh, the object to the next conveyor belt, to the next assembly line, and we just have these children go through a factory. Whereas with ILM, with the integrated learning model, we that is why it's called the integrated learning model, because the disciplines and the areas of learning are integrated. They are, uh, integrated is such a beautiful word because it's like uh, you cook something, you cook a nice dish. So all the flavors are integrated or the ingredients are integrated. You can't separate them from each other. You can't, sometimes you can't even identify them from each other. It depends on what you're making. So just like in making a certain cuisine, a certain dish, you integrate all the ingredients in the recipe and you combine all the flavors and that's what gives it its unique uh, wholeness. Similarly, uh, a, an education program needs to be integrated, first of all, with real life uh, and more importantly, maybe with our deen, with Islam and also integrated within itself. So uh, with integration, we basically have three types. You have your intradisciplinary, so that means within the discipline. Uh, so within mathematics, there might be different topics or sub areas that you combine. So you might be combining percentages, ratios, fractions, etc. For example, I'll give you an example from our grade one. Uh, our children, they combined um, learning about money, coins, using coins. And uh, we had, um, like, it's so interesting because now in Pakistan, you can't even use coins anymore because they're absolutely obsolete. But we had one rupee coins, two rupee coins, five rupee coins, and 10 rupee coins. At the same time, they were learning about time. So they did a little project where they made clocks and uh, each hour of the clock, they represented with combinations of coins. So one rupee represents one, one o'clock, two rupees represent two o'clock, two and a two and a one combined represent three o'clock, two twos combined represent four, and so on and so forth. So this way they're understanding the concept of time and the concept of money, and they're combining that, uh, you know, in real life because behind it is actually counting. And uh, the number line theory, the number theory, if you go at a higher level, uh, but what's being used is practical real life scenarios. So interdisciplinary, then you have interdisciplinary, that between various subject areas, between various um, learning areas. And then you have transdisciplinary, which goes beyond school, which goes into real life. Uh, and that is where things get really interesting. And that is where the application of Dean becomes very important because without Dean, you have no guidance as to how to live your life. So an example I give is anyone driving a car. So a lot of you might be driving cars. When you're driving, you don't think 
when you look at a sign in English, you don't say, oh, I studied about this in English class. And then in physics class, I learned that I have to hit the brakes so, so that the speed, the acceleration actually becomes negative and then I can change my velocity. That's not how it works. And I learned in, uh, you know, uh, maybe in social studies class that, uh, um, you know, the, the, uh, the rules of driving or, you know, sometimes we have that, for example, that what the different signs mean on, uh, on the road. So, oh, I, I learned that in social studies class. Doesn't work that way. Or say you go out grocery shopping. So I learned in math class how to add these things. And in English class or in Urdu class, I learned how to read the labels. And then, so it doesn't work that way. Life is not about English, math, science, social studies, Islamiyat, Urdu. So these disjointed, monolithic disciplines actually hinder learning. What One of the biggest losses because it's teaching centric and not learning centric as we uh, spoke about before, not student centric. Say a student is taking a math lesson. He's struggling with the concept. Say a new concept is being introduced about angles, about, uh, you know, uh, the opposite angle and the adjacent angle, for example, in a, in a right triangle. Um, and he's just trying to pick things up Oh, the opposite and the adjacent added equals 90 degrees and there's 180 degrees. And he's just, these things are just coming together in his mind and he's just about to start really getting into it and suddenly bell rings. Oh, math lesson is over. Now you move on to English. You move on to science. But, but wait, I just want, no, 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 no. I'm not available for you anymore. No more talking about math. Now you will be doing your English. So right when the child was about to learn, you shut them up, you close them down. Why should they ever want to learn? Right when things got interesting, right when their mind was actually shaping and forming everything, you disconnected the plug. Why? Because the next subject has to start. So this is the ridiculous way that we run schools. Uh, Let's take another example. Let's uh, let's talk about you know integration of Deen now, for example. So say we're talking about astronomy and uh, solar system, etc., uh, in your science class, and uh, it happens to be the month of Rajab, and uh, the children are curious that uh, you know uh, our parents were telling us, or my grandfather, or my Qadi sahab, I uh, was telling me about uh, that uh, Miraj took place in this month, and the, the night journey of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al Isra al Miraj. So, uh, what happened? How did he travel? And, and the child, the children are so excited to talk about this, and it meshes so well with your lesson in, on the solar system. And this is such a teachable moment. This is where things they can get really absorbed. But we say, sorry, no, I'm not your Islamic studies teacher. I'm not your Islamiyat teacher. Go ask someone else. Because right now we're talking about the universe and about light years and how, uh, you know, objects travel in space. But we cannot be talking about Miraj. So right there that you have forced the child to be in these, these prison cells, as John Taylor Gatto used to call them. Um, that schools basically make classrooms into prison cells. And the child has absolutely no, it, it's, a, it's a mental prison, it's not a physical prison. But mentally the child is in a prison because they cannot do or think or learn as is suitable for them. So an integrated learning model allows you to break those barriers, break those walls. Let them explore. Let them move smoothly and seamlessly between disciplines where math is an opportunity to learn language, to learn English, where science is an opportunity to learn math co concepts, where social sciences merge with your cultural and your uh, Islamic values, where everything meshes, where, where you break these learning area boundaries and 
you structure your delivery, you structure your delivery of knowledge based on topics, based on inquiry of the students. So topics, let's 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 go with the topic um, approach. Let's take let's take a topic, um, water conservation. Now water conservation is a value and it is an absolutely uh, urgent, it's an absolutely urgent requirement for the entire world. We need to learn how to conserve our water. We waste way too much water, which is destroying the planet, which is destroying the uh, the potential for life. It's, it's, a, it's a, an existential crisis. And if our children are not well aware of this, then they're there will be disasters, there will be wars, there will be uh, massacres for water. If we, There will be no peace on, and no, no justice on earth because people will not have water. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَيْءٍ The basis of life is water. Right now there are rovers on Mars and elsewhere in the universe they're trying to find water because that's the basis of life. So water conservation is something that all schools have to have high on their curriculum list. But how do you fit that in English, science, math, social studies, etc.? So when you go into topic-based learning and water conservation becomes important, then when, you, when you're talking about water, you talk about its mathematics, so its liters and its gallons and milliliters, uh, measurement of, of water, volume of water. When you talk about geography, then you talk about the bodies of water and their relations to each other, salt water, fresh water, uh, polar ice caps, glaciers, they're melting, etc. Uh, water table, water underground, um, aquifers, um, mountain glaciers, their movements, the uh, water cycle, precipitation, etc. You come into science, sources of water, the water cycle, uh, evaporation, condensation, precipitation, uh, etc. And it's all united with deen because water conservation is a value that Rasulullah taught us. He said, even if you are uh, doing ablution, you're doing wudu at the bank of a stream, do not waste water. Do not waste water. Water is the essence of life. So, for example, here in Unity, what we did, we, we built upon this. So, uh, Rasul wasallam would perform his wudu with one mud, and I wish I had it right now before um, we started this, uh, uh, but uh, that would that would have been a nice prop. So we have our children use this mud. It's a measure, it's about 750 to 800 milliliters uh, of water. And so they practice doing wudu with this one mud. And now what else they do is a project, we go into project-based learning when we go into transdisciplinary learning and it becomes real life. So uh, their project, for example, that collect when you go home, do wudu and collect the amount of water that you're using. Or, uh, for example, estimate how much water when anyone, any person in your family takes a bath, takes a shower, how much water they are using. Or when you're washing your dishes, how much water is being used there. When clothes are being washed in the laundry, how much water is being used there. So estimation comes into play. Uh, uh, conversions from uh, gallons or liters to mil, you know, etc. These things uh, come into play. Uh, various volumes. So this becomes real life. Now they have estimated that in my house, in one day, so much water is used, an X amount of liters. In one uh, week, X amount of liters is used. In one month, X amount of, you know, uh, Z amount of uh, liters is used. Okay, then we go on to the next level. How many houses on your street? How many houses on your street? So just in your street, how many, how much water is being used? Okay, let's say, and then we go on to the next level, that let's say all this water, uh, then we have to quantify it, we have to give it some sort of monetary value. We say uh, a tanker of water, which may contain, um, you know, 5,000 liters, for example. So, how much does a tanker of liter cost uh, of water cost? So say a delivery of one tanker uh, today's day, I'm not exactly sure. Let's estimate it at 10,000 rupees. So if per household, 
per month, let's say 5,000 liters are being consumed. Or, uh, sorry, that's not enough. We say about 50,000 liters are consumed. And there are 100 uh, homes in that neighborhood or in that street. So that becomes uh, 5 million liters. And divide that by 10,000. So uh, we get about 500 uh, tankers of water being used in that one street in one month. When you multiply that by uh, uh, the amount uh, of, of uh, money it costs, so that's how they can figure out how much it's actually costing us when we're wasting water in terms of a real, uh, in terms of rupees, in terms of dollars, in terms of any currency. So this allows them to venture into economics, into social uh, issues, uh, into political issues that what do we need to prevent water from being wasted? How do we frame policy? How do we enforce uh, these, uh, these policies? What sort of governance is needed? This is what real life is about. That's where your measurements and your science of the water and your religious values all come together to actually form knowledge, education for life. But if they're only learning about milliliters and liters and conversion because they have to take a test, they will never understand these issues. That is why integrated learning is the only way to go. This is the only real way, inquiry-based learning, topic-based learning, project-based learning, activity-based learning. These activities can be uh, multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, where uh, their computer's assignment has to do with their science project, where their art project has to do with what they're learning in language arts in, in, in English or in Urdu, etc., uh, where calligraphy of Arabic is integrated with their Arabic language. So where we are crossing those boundaries, where we are reinforcing concepts, where their uh, language arts are being focused on in their scientific writing. You see, so this transdisciplinary approach is absolutely necessary. And this is the way that every one of us should be going. Thank you.